Once again, we are going to start with an opening statement from the head coach, followed with questions for the student athletes. At the conclusion of the questions for the student athletes, they'll be dismissed. Then questions for the head coach can start. Please raise your hand and someone will come around with a microphone. Please give your name and media affiliation. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We will address questions in the room first and go to Zoom if time allows. Now we'll start with the opening statement from Oakland's head coach, Greg Campy. couple nights ago it's, it's hard because it's over right and it's going to end this way for every team but one in this tournament the hard part for me is I've done this a long time and I'm going to tell you I, I in this day and age of kids leaving and the lack of respect for authority and the you know what about me? What can I make? And all the people telling everybody that's how you should be. You know, the way we're going. To have a team like I had, 15 guys that just cared about each other, 15 guys that just cared about the outcome of the team and the pride they had to be part of a team and the way they joked and hung around and you know, every game all through the year, somebody else, somebody else, it was, you know, nobody cared who it was. They just were glad that we were together. When things went bad, we picked each other up, and then we won games, and we won games, and close games after close games, I guess it ends with a close loss. But um, it, it was just a joy in this day and age to walk into the office every day and know that I'm lucky I get to go in that gym and be with this, this group of kids. And that's probably what hurts the most right now is I know that that's over. And uh, man, I'm gonna miss that. Just a reminder, no video cameras are permitted. Thank you. Representing Oakland student athletes are Trey Townsend and Jack Golkey. Questions for the student athletes. Front right. As for Jack and Jerry DePaula, Tri Tribune Review, Pittsburgh, what was it like uh, having those guys follow you everywhere you went? It seemed like every time you turned around, uh, either more sell or somebody else was on top of you. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty used to that at this point. So uh, obviously you want to get open shots, but uh, that's, that's pretty typical throughout the season. Um, I've seen that, so it's, it's something I've worked on. Back aisle. Matthew Thedros, Duke Hayne Duke. This question is for both of you as the season's coming to an end. Can you just speak on this locker room and this relationship and the brotherhood you guys have and how that feels as it coming to an end? Trey, you want to start? Yeah, I mean, that's the locker room and the culture that we have on this team is what got us this far. You know, we've, we've every single, mostly every single game we've played this year has been, you know, within single digits, final score. So, it's it's just a special group of guys, as Camp said, every single day coming to practice. It's it's just joy, and everyone's happy to be able to play basketball one through 15, 15 no matter if you're a red shirt, you know, walk on. It, it it didn't matter. Everyone was happy to be there and just be around each other. So that's obviously probably the most, you know, sad thing about this whole thing coming to an end. Obviously losing, losing sucks, but this group of guys, it's the closeness of everyone and knowing this whole group won't play basketball together again is, is going to sting for a while. But... This whole journey, I've been trying to tell everyone to appreciate every single moment, every single, you know, time we're together because these are the best years of your life, and I, I think everyone's tried to make the most of that, and I'm sure everyone will have a great relationship after this after this season and for the rest of our lives. Jack, yeah, I mean, at the beginning of the season, uh, we all kind of just set out and banded together, and we wanted to make this a special season for Trey, Chris, and Blake. They they built the program here with Coach Campy and. Um, I think we did that to the best of our abilities. Obviously, like Trey said, we, we really wanted to win today. Um, I wanted to go to Dallas really bad. All the guys wanted to go to Dallas really bad. But I told them in the locker room, uh, the thing I wanted the most really was to see everyone on, at practice on Monday. That's, that's the thing I'm going to miss the most is just seeing my guys every single day. But I know, like Trey said, we'll, we'll stay together. Brooke, front right. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Trey, how do you describe kind of the whirlwind, the roller coaster of the last 72 hours from arriving in Pittsburgh to being on the podium right now? I mean, Campy said before the season even started that this tournament is nothing like you could ever imagine. And 
once it got here, that that was true. It lived up to the hype. And I just, like I said in the last question, I just really wanted everyone to appreciate every single moment of this whole experience because not everyone gets to play in this tournament. And for our sake, not everyone gets to win a game in this tournament. So obviously we lost today, but I still want to remember every everything that I've, that I've gone through with these guys. I'm sure everyone will. It's That's been the biggest thing is just appreciating every moment. Like I said, these are the best years of your life. And I'm, I think we've been making the most of you know, our time here, and I, I hope we left a everlasting mark on this this program and this university. Back left aisle. Mike, Mike Oste, Yard Barker. Jack, we've kind of got to know you a lot over the last couple of days on national shows, NIL deals, things like that. Number one, what's something that you could tell us to help us get to know your teammate Trey a little bit more? We know his game, but maybe not him as much as a person. And then to kind of piggyback off of what you were just saying, where do you hope the future of this program goes? Because Coach talked about the ring could say conference champ. It could say Sweet 16. It could say NCAA tournament appearance. It's not going to say Sweet 16. But where do you hope the future of the program goes? Uh, just for Trey, I mean, he's just been, a, from what I know, learning about before I got here, but then what I've experienced since I got here, just an absolute pillar of this program. Um, you can't tell the history of Oakland basketball without Trey Townsend. And uh, as much as he's a great basketball player, he's an even better friend and, and man. And he's, uh, I think he's going to grow up to be a, a tremendous father and a tremendous husband. Um, so I, I can't say enough good things about Trey. Um, for this program, uh, I got faith that Coach Campy is going to keep building and, and this program is going to keep getting better. I think this is just the start for, for this era of the program. Uh, he's got some tremendous players coming back. and. Uh, they're going to be even better next year, I think. We have time for a couple more for student athletes. Left, middle. Will Graves, AP. Guys, you were in here the other night saying we're not pretenders. We're, we're for, do you think you proved that tonight? And because of that, does that make it just that much a little more difficult? Because it wasn't just like some feel-good story where you won a game and then the second game it, you know, got away from you. You were in it to the last, you know, last minutes. Yeah, you know, pretty much like I said earlier, every single game of the season for us has been close and. It just shows how tough we are as a team and how determined we are to win and how you know much confidence we have in every single player. And you know, I hope that we prove that the last game that we won wasn't a fluke. We're able to compete with anyone in the country and you know, we just played a really good team. Like I've been saying, every single team in this tournament's really good. If you make it here, you're a talented group of guys and it just didn't go our way tonight, but my guys battled to the very end and no matter how, you know, what happened out there, I just knew they were gonna give max effort and, you know, have no regrets after the game was over. Yeah, um, I don't think any of us regret the confidence that we had going into our first game and the confidence we had going into our second game. Um, obviously, the result's not what we wanted it to be, but we put in all the preparation throughout the entire season with our coaching staff and our teammates to to put ourselves in a position to win this game today, and, and we just didn't. Uh, there were some plays that we didn't make, but like Trey said, it wasn't an effort thing or a want to thing. Uh, basketball just... Uh, can give you a lot, but it can take a lot at the same time. So that's all, that's really all it boils down to. Our last two for student athletes right here, right aisle, and then right end there. Go. Yeah. Hey guys, Tony Garcia, Detroit Free Press. Uh, obviously, in this moment, very tough. But there will be a day that you're not crying because it's over, but you're smiling because it happened, right? I don't know if you can mentally try to get there right now, but it it kind of felt like Steph Curry when you had the ball at times, Jack. Just sort of the way people were. I mean, have been talking about you and. Trey, 30 points on national TV. Can you guys, is there any part of you that can reflect on, on what you guys really just did? Um, for me, I've, I've been through so much basketball and, and a lot of college basketball seasons. And this was probably the most enjoyable one I've ever had. And I've had a bunch of amazing ones. But um, having gone through that many, I feel like I kind of, throughout this whole season, I've kind of been reflecting on it as it goes. And uh, just appreci trying to appreciate it as much as possible. And I think I did that. And I think our, our team did that as well. Um, so obviously, like you said, it is very disappointing that it's over. But I think we, we did a really good job of soaking up our time with each other and, and making the absolute most of it. Our right, last question to the right. Uh, Neil Rule with Oakland Radio and uh, either of you, Jack or Trey. Has it set in? It probably hasn't yet. But has it set in that you guys have created some of the best moments in the history of Oakland University, like as a whole, not just Oakland basketball, but Oakland University? I mean, I'm just glad and you know proud of this team for what we've done. Like you said, for this university, I think people now 
hopefully will know that we're not in California and we're, you know, we're from Michigan now. Um, and, you know, for me, I always wanted to come here and hang banners and make these memories and, you know, put Oakland on the map. And to say that, you know, we did that, it's such a special thing. And I'm just so happy, if, you know, for my guys to do it with this group of guys. It was that much more special, like with Blake and Chris, who's, who've been here since my freshman year over this whole time. It's, it means that much more. But like you said, I'm, I'm proud for what we've done for this university and, you know, put it on the map, essentially. Jack? Yeah, I've, uh, I've just learned so much in so little time from all the all the guys and um, I couldn't be happier for coach Campy and uh, like I said before Trey Chris and Blake those those four uh, four men are just tremendous and the four years that they all had together to build this program just I think means so much to the university from what I've seen in, in my year and I really wish I was it would have been here earlier or had more time here because it's it's a tremendous experience all right thank you thanks Thank you. OK, question, questions for Coach Campy. Back middle. Michael Grady, Duquesne Duke. Uh, Coach, you mentioned Thursday night that there was a moment previously in your career that had it happened would have changed Oakland basketball. This was obviously before the Kentucky game. Was there a moment like that tonight that you think was similar? Is there any one thing that you can look back on? referee's call in the game we were talking about before and uh, ball rolled around the rim and didn't go in uh, tonight it's me I mean we didn't uh, I blame myself we didn't get we got the ball with 17 seconds to go and we didn't get a shot and there's only one person to blame for that that's me and I got to sit here and live with that now because we didn't get a shot and yeah, I've been in that position if I've coached 1,300 games, which I think is probably top four or five ever. Been in that position hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And to have it happen in the most important game that Oakland's ever played, uh, that's, that's, yeah, I'll carry this with me the rest of my life. That, that's just terrible that we didn't get a shot. So that's on me. Questions for Coach? Right aisle. Bailey Tucker, College Basketball Review. Coach, I think the bulk of the country was really rooting for your team tonight. <laughs> Do you have a message for those people who probably didn't even know where Oakland was before this, who were just really cheering you guys on? Well, I think, I hope what they saw was what I talked about in my opening statement. Uh, you know, I think we're good for college basketball. I think, I think we really were. I think, I think there's 360 some Division One coaches. That's all the jobs there are in the country, and I would say a lot of those guys are envious not of Oakland or not of what we do or not of me, but of our team, and not the winning or losing, but having that as a team. Because what I talked about is in this day is really unusual, and so I think that we probably that was reflected, and. I mean, I don't think you can play harder than we play. I really don't. There were more floor burns, more dives on the floor, more. I don't think, you know, I think we played pretty smart too. And, you know, Dean Smith, who most people today, you know, he's fading away into people's memories. But Dean Smith, you know, for all the coaches in the world that read his books and know who he is, he had a mon mantra of play hard, play smart, and play as one. And I think we epitomize that. I really do. And I think that's probably why. And then, obviously, when you got a guy that's going to be a, a insurance salesman scoring 60 points in two games and killing it, I mean, when he, I don't know if I've ever seen, I know in my life I've never put a sub in the game and saw a place go nuts with, you know, three minutes into a game with, you know, what does this place seat? 18,000 or whatever it seats, I don't know. But, that's the large, that was the large, loud, loudest roar of the night when he went in three minutes into the game, and then he caught it and made it, and it was electric. And I mean, the legend of Jack Gulk, he's going <laughs> to it's going to go on, and Oakland's going to be associated with that. And then you saw Trey Townsend is, I mean, Trey Townsend's a pro. He's a pro. He proved it tonight. You know, everybody says, well, isn't he a little undersized? And 
He went and made threes tonight. He did, he does what he has to do. We could have shot a lot of threes all year, but he nobody could guard him in there at our, at our level. I think he got fouled a lot tonight. You know, I think he got fouled a lot tonight. How many free throws did he shoot? Eight. Oh, I, if, and I, if that was in our league and that happened, he would have shot 20 tonight because that's the only way to stop him is to, you know, to knock him to the ground. And that, so is what it is. But I hope that's what they saw. Left aisle. Coach Cameron Hoover, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette here. Uh, Trey obviously had a great game tonight. Can you just sort of talk about uh, his performance? And also, coming out uh, into the second half, was that kind of a coaching adjustment to try to play through him more, or was he just kind of reading the defense and taking what they gave him? No, the, 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 you got to give credit. If you want to look at this from a, a coach's mind or a analytical, not analytical, but a coaching look at it, I felt they knew we run a lot of sets. That play card I have has 77 sets on it, and I probably had 45 primed for tonight. That's hard in a one-day prep. So Kevin was very smart. He knows we don't have a true point guard. So what they did early in the game is they picked us up full court and made us earn the court, and then the time, they shortened our time, and they also kept us from getting the ball to the top of the key and running our sets. So the shot clock's winding down and, and we're jacking threes. We made some, three point game at halftime. So the adjustment we made is that we wanted to catch the ball off a rebound or if they scored and fly it up the floor and get it into past the hash mark, the 27 foot line. We wanted to advance the ball at that. Maybe we could touch the paint, but if not, get it by that and then run our sets. And you saw much more fluidity out of us in the second half and we were able to get the ball to Trey. I mean, there, there, was, there were two key plays in the game. Um, and, you know, the game was called the same both ways. It's, I'm not saying that it, it was wrong. I'm just saying it was a key play. And that is we had the two point lead in the ball and we ran a little baseline play that we've run for years and he got the ball and the guy just pushed him out of bounds and they didn't call it. And he threw the ball to Lampman in the corner and Lampman shot an air ball. If we score on that possession, it would been the first time in the whole game we'd have a two, two possession lead. I think that would have changed the outcome of the game. And then the second, which is probably the biggest play of the game, was again we got a two point lead. We get a kid take the shot from the corner, and it, the ball never even got 10, t 10 feet two in the air. I think it was 10 foot in the air. And there's a minute something to go. And if that ball hits the rim and goes where it should have gone, we get the rebound, we're in really good position. Instead, it hits right in the front of the rim and comes right down to the big guy, and he lays it in. You know, we were fronting the big guy. And the only rebound he was going to get is if it hit the rim and came straight down. <laughs> And that's what happens. Those are the bounces of the game. So we still had our chance. We still had the ball. We got to stop. You know, they had the ball with 50 seconds to go. We got to stop. We live on our defense, and we did what we had to do, and then we didn't get a shot off. I still don't – I got to see it. I, I still don't know because we saw it on the scoreboard, and it sure looked like it was our ball. I know 18,000 people thought it was our ball. But they said they saw some other view of it and that the kid hit it, but my guy's fingertip or something was still on it or something. So we didn't get, you know, two seconds, we didn't get the last shot. And again, I'm going to live with that. It's, it's going to be hard. Trust me, it's going to be hard. Probably got time for two more front and right. Uh, Coach, and <clears throat> Jerry DePaula, Pittsburgh Trip. First of all, thanks for telling your story so well and your school story so well this week. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering uh, your intentions on that last play. The ball went out of bounds and you couldn't take a shot. What, what was your plan on that last possession? The ball was getting to Townsend on the, uh, facing the basket, the left elbow. And he was supposed to rip and drive. And he was either going to be the hero or he was going to go to the free throw line or they weren't going to call it. One of those three things was going to happen. He was going to rip and score. The kid guarding him had four fouls, you know, but I'm sure the kid, they weren't going to let him get a good look. They'd rather have him try and make a free throw. Um, we took too long to get in it. They, they came and denied the entry pass and our guard with the ball dribble entried instead. And by then we, you know, it's my fault because we had 17 seconds and we didn't want to go until 10 or 12. If we would have gone at 17, we could have handled that. And that was the mistake. That's the mistake that our coach made. And it's, 
it's a big one. Questions for Coach? Thank you, Coach. Thank you. We really, we really appreciate everything. Um, it's hard to get here, guys, from a mid-major. It's hard to get here, so it's a tough one, but thank you.